Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I think we pastors would like all of you to believe that somewhere in our early life we were sheep ranchers. <laughs> As if we have all the answers for how sheep behave and how shepherds operate. Uh, uh, we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Most all of us have never been on a sheep ranch before. You know, I, I got a feeling that probably most of you have the same kind of experience with sheep that I've had in my life. My experience with sheep have been uh, in petting zoos, right? And, and you go into a petting zoo and it's the goats that attack you, right? And the sheep, where are they off? They're off cowering someplace and uh, they don't want anything to do with you. Like this picture up here, uh, I, growing up in Oregon in the Willamette Valley this time of year, uh, they bring the sheep down from the mountains, and uh, there's hundreds of them out in the, in the valley in the grass fields, what would be the grass seed uh, in the summer, and that's where they winter. And it's a beautiful scene like that scene in the picture, but you still see them from a distance. And maybe like me, you've gone to a county fair or a state fair, and you go into the sheep pavilion, and maybe there's a sheep that's being sheared in there. They're all groomed. They all smell better than they normally do. <laughs> and you still go to pet them, and what they do? Back of the pen. <laughs> they want to avoid you. Be honest, I've had very little dealings with sheep in my life and don't know a whole, whole lot about sheep. But I know even less about shepherds. I can't tell you that I've ever run into a shepherd. Someone who's done that for a life. I, I, even a, a, a sheep rancher, I've not, I've not been around them. Don't know. If, I mean, you know, past them in the, on the street and so forth, but never sat down and had coffee with a shepherd before. So I don't know what it's like to be a shepherd. And the reason why I'm saying this is that in, uh, every year, every year, not uh, during Advent, but during the Easter season, we have a special Sunday. It's called uh, uh, the Good Shepherd Sunday. And the text, the gospel reading that we heard earlier today, that reading is one of, one of them that we read throughout the three-year period of the, those Sundays. And we talk about shepherds, but to be honest, most of us pastors don't have a clue what we're talking about when it comes to sheep and shepherds. But we still have to deal with the text. And we have to deal with the reality that the Bible in many places talks about you and me as sheep and God is our shepherd. And we're confronted with that again, both in our gospel reading and in the last verse of our Old Testament reading today. You see, there's good news and there's bad news that I have for you today. Uh, the, the, the good news is that the shepherd watches over you, and bad news is actually that the shepherd watches over you. Let's deal with the last one first. You see, we as sheep, we're prone to do three things. We're prone to wander, to lust, and to want to dwell in the spotlight. Let's start with wandering. As sheep, we are prone to wander. We want to do things our way, and we don't want anybody telling us what to do. My second congregation was in Spokane, Washington. And I had just gotten there in the summer of... Uh, 1985. And just after I got in there, I, I did a funeral for a lady I didn't know. Uh, in fact, she was barely a, a French member of our congregation. I had never met her before, and at the, the funeral home, uh, I met with the funeral director ahead of time. I didn't meet with the family because there was only the son and the daughter-in-law and two of their kids, the four of them at this funeral. And so I do what I usually do, and, and many of you have been to a funeral that I have conducted before, and, and for me it's so very important that when we proclaim the word and we talk about the person who's died, to talk about what God did for them in Jesus Christ and how he has risen from the dead, and that's our hope. But emphasizing again, it's not what we do, but what God had done. And I did that at, at that service. I sat down in the funeral director started the next song. It was a Frank Sinatra song. I did it my way. <laughs> I 
That song is the song, the funeral song of the sheep. I did it my way. And that's what we, we live by, isn't it? We don't want people telling us what to do. We want to do our th- things our way. And the good shepherd watches us. But I also said that sheep are prone to lust. You see, the wandering that we do, wandering away from God, leads us to, is caused by our lust for things we don't have, a desire to, to have different things. And lust for things has to deal with contentedness, doesn't it? And we're not really a contented lot of people. And so we lust after things. Most all of us here have a car. It's a car that gets us from point A to point B. Now, maybe it's in the shop a little bit more than we would like it to be, but it does what it's supposed to do. Maybe it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of modern cars. And so we lust. We want that new car, that fresh smell of a new car and all the new fangled instruments that we never figure out half of them anyway. We have homes. Now, maybe our home is a little older than what we would like, but we have a roof over our heads, and it might be a little smaller than we'd like. And so we lust after that new home, and like a new car, it has that new home smell and all the new fancy gadgets in it. And we have clothes. We have a lot of clothes in our our closet, they might be a little old now, and in my case, fit a little tighter now. <laughs> and so we lust after new clothes that are going to make us look spectacular, right? New cars aren't bad, new homes aren't bad, and new clothing is not bad. The word I keep using is lust after, as if somehow something new, bright, and shiny is going to make us feel better about ourselves. And the Good Shepherd watches over us. So the, the, the funeral song of the sheep is, I did it my way, which leads us to, or that comes out of our lust for other things. And that lust for other things really is about wanting to be in the spotlight. That we want to be in the spotlight because the world tells us we're nobodies. And you've heard that. You hear it in commercials and you hear it from people you work with, and none of us wants to be a nobody. We want to be a somebody. We want to be applauded. In fact, we want a standing ovation. So here's what I'd like you to think about for just a second. What do you want to be when you grow up? Okay? I, I, even those of us who are older, we still have a fantasy life about what we want to be when we grow up. All right? What does you want to be when you grow up? Do you fantasize, are you a parent, and are you fantasizing about having children that when you go to the parent-teacher conference, the teacher opens the door wide, hugs you like no, nothing else, and says, your kid is the best kid I've ever had in my life. They listen to me. They do everything I ask them to do. I want a hundred of your kids in my class. Because what you really want is the spotlight of being a great parent. Not so much about your kid as it is about you. Do you fantasize about really standing on a stage? Literally, I'm talking about standing on a stage. Do you, do you fantasize about being a rock star? You know, a, a person who, who's, who's the, 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 the lead in a play or the soloist in a, in a, in a musical? Well, that literally with the spotlight really on you, is that what you fantasize about? Do you fantasize about being a CEO of the company you're working for? Not because you want to tell other people what to do, because nobody can be the better CEO than you will ever be. And there will be a book written about you. In fact, you'll write the book <laughs> about yourself, how great you were. We all have fantasies about standing in the spotlight because the world tells us we're nothing. That's what sheep do. As sheep, we are prone to wander. 
and, and, and to lust after things and to, to want to stand in the spotlight. And the good shepherd sees us. The bad news is the good shepherd sees us. And why is that bad? Because we break God's heart. We break the shepherd's heart as his sheep when we wander and lust after things and want the spotlight. But I also said at the beginning of this message that there's good news that the good shepherd watches over us. And that good news has everything to do with his love for you and me. Is that he doesn't, he's not content with his sheep wandering and lusting and wanting the spotlight. He loves us. And you heard that in the gospel reading for today. In the first verse of the gospel reading, uh, Jesus talked about, uh, said, I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. I think often when we hear that, what we think is that that must have sounded strange to the people of that time, that a shepherd would lay down his, his life for the sheep. But it's, the, it's actually the opposite. Because a shepherd who owned the sheep, who the, 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 the sheep belonged to that shepherd, it was expected that a shepherd would lay down his life for the sheep. If there was a predator that would destroy the flock, he would put himself in, the arm, in harm's way of that, those, the, uh, the, for those sheep and lay down his life for the sheep. This is an image that those who heard Jesus say it would gravitate towards saying, yes, I get it, I understand it. And he says, I'm the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. He lays down his life for you. And he does that not with a, a rod or a staff, but a cross. And he defeated the enemy that wants to devour you. He, did the, he defeated Satan. He defeated death by his death and resurrection for you. See, the good news in this is that the shepherd comes for you and me. That's where we've got to tie in now the lesson from Isaiah. Let's look one more time at the last verse of that, that text where Isaiah writes, He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them to his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Those last three aspects of what a shepherd does, the shepherd does in, in tending us, all relate to our need to wander, to lust, and to be in the spotlight. The good shepherd won't let us wander. He grabs his arms around us and pulls us tight to himself. He doesn't want you and me to stray away from his love, and he knows that we won't come back, so he comes to us. He finds us. He grabs us and brings us close. And then you get the next statement. The next thing that says that he, he, he holds them to his bosom, to his heart. And that has to do with our desire and our lust for other things. Because when we lust after other things, what are we saying? I'm feeling like there's a lack in my life. I need something more than what I'm experiencing now, and this thing will get it. This thing will give it. This thing will give it to me. And what God is saying, no, my heart, that's what's going to give you what you need. And so the, the good shepherd grabs us with his arms, holds us to his heart, and says, here's what you need. This is all you need is my love for you. That's all that matters. It's right here, not out there. But then we get this statement that he guides those who are with young. Moms, you get this. You remember when you gave birth. What a joy. What a joy. But at the same time, it took a toll on you physically, if not emotionally, and spiritually. And there's that, that time when, of, of, of weakness in the midst of the joy. And, and the Good Shepherd, it says, leads those sheep 
who are with young, those who are, are fragile. And what does he do? He shines the spotlight of his love on us. When we are feeling weak, when we feel like nobody cares, when we feel like we're wandering around aimlessly and we want the light to shine on us, it does shine, but it's not the light we're expecting, it's the light of his love that we need that shines on us. It shines on you. You know, again, I, I, I can do all the reading I want to do about shepherds and sh- sheep, but I still don't get it. I don't understand it. I haven't experienced it. And please, I'm not asking to experience it. <laughs> but what I do know is that we're prone to wander and, and to lust after things and want the spotlight. And yet, even though we as sheep who would go astray, it is the good shepherd who enfolds us in his arms, brings us to his bosom, and shines the spotlight of his love on us. Amen. Please stand. Declare our faith in the words of the